period in which our game takes place, 1511 to 1512, is kind of a transitional period for the Ottoman Empire. And this is the period before the great golden age or the, the high point of Suleiman the Magnificent's reign. This was a period where we got to really play around with our imagination. One of the interesting challenges with Revelations is that Ezio is very much a fish out of water in the Ottoman Empire. He wants to meet people who will help him achieve his own goals, which is to get into Altair's library. But apart from that, he wants to kind of stay out of the mix. So Ezio in the Revelations is uh, following the steps of Altair is going back where Altair was raised. So there is a connection we can make between Altair and the last Ezio. He has to blend into the new setting. So during his journey, I think he, he tried to live the life of Altair. Ezio in Revelation is more like an old wolf. He's more focused, he's darker, he's wiser. He's more a killing machine like Altair was. In Revelations, Altair does return for a number of playable sequences. And we think that fans will be satisfied with the, the conclusion of his story. But uh, this is definitely an Ezio game, and this is Ezio's story. So we are in Venice, California, recording Roger Craig Smith, our beloved Ezio. Robert. It is very good. <laughs> Peter? Uh, solid. Solid? Solid. Right. Yeah. Without the diction guy, I'm, uh, I'm nothing. Uh, <clears throat> Keep your... <laughs> Keep... <laughs> All right, that was good. Hey, there are changes happening to my body. It's very strange. One of the things we're most pleased with with Revelations is the time and care we put into the, the conclusion of our assassin's stories. The send-off we give to our two assassins. We think fans are going to be extremely pleased with what we've done. I think we'll leave fans very, very satisfied. As an open world, Assassin's Creed has a reputation of uh, no game who is paying a lot of attention to detail, so we really push that to a next level in Assassin's Creed Revelation. A lot of people from the team had the chance to go to Istanbul to be immersed in the city. Constantinople, okay, I gotta make it. Istanbul was formerly known as Constantinople. I was part of the team that, uh, that go there, get reference from there. Over here we've got Hagia Sophia, and it's the most known landmark in Istanbul. You can climb it and also you can access the inside. It's really impressive. <laughs> to make the sound realistic, we went to Istanbul to recreate the ambiences, the crowd life, the merchants, the Grand Bazaar, the, the, the call to prayer sounds, and to generally get a feel of the immersion of the city. I went with a rig to record sign sweeps, which actually capture the impulse responses of the interiors. So what you actually hear in the space, the echo, for example, is what you're actually hearing in the game. And that's the first time in any game that I've ever heard of. There was a reason I had to go to Istanbul. <laughs> I work closely with Simon Lantry to capture the essence uh, for the soundtrack. The composers were Jesper Kite and Lorne Bolf. And for the scripted events, uh, for the cinematics, we collaborated with Malmo Symphony Orchestra. The results are quite outstanding. We took into account that Constantinople was in the middle of the world at that time. It was a very interesting blend of many cultures. So we tried to find a fine equilibrium between the Western world blended with the more Eastern world. It ended up using a lot of Greek elements in the music, some Persian elements as well. I personally think that we achieved like the best 5.1 mix I've ever heard for a, an orchestral interpretation and can't wait for the fans to hear it. <laughs> oh, hi. I didn't see you there. The philosophy behind every new addition that we've added to Revelations is simple. It needed to consolidate or bridge between at least two of the main three gameplay pillars of Assassin's Creed. Navigation, combat, and stealth, sort of a social stealth, if you will. The reason for this is that we wanted to really consolidate the core experience for the player. So the first thing we added was the hook blade. The hook blade, obviously, is first and foremost a navigational tool, but it also bridges between navigation and combat. Ask Falco to show you the, uh, the counter steal. It's uh, one of his favorite moves in the game. You're interrupting my playing. You'll do the counter, your hook goes out, and then he's like, ah, like that, he gets all. So here's my favorite move. Ah, oh, hey, I just took your wallet. I'm a bit of a compulsive looter. You know, thank you very much. Now I'm going to kill you. Every single ingredient you collect in Revelations is usable for bomb crafting. You even have one really cool achievement called Mosh Pit. You use a cherry bomb, you gather all the guards in one little spot. And throw in a poison bomb in there and just have them start like, you know, twisting and quivering as they're sort of writhing before they die. And it's a Mosh Pit. <laughs> I love it. I think Falco really needs to get out more.
It's all about the combinations. One single bomb is, is less satisfying than combining it with other bombs. For the many different types of combinations that you can choose throughout uh, the game, we went outside of uh, Montreal uh, with the sound team and we went and experimented and we blew a lot of stuff up. See, Mum, I could get paid to blow stuff up. <laughs> <laughs> Every time we actually integrate one of these systems into the game, we have the luxury of being able to send a build over to the third floor to our test department where, you know, real fans of the franchise actually get to try out these different things and give us direct feedback. We have to make sure that they know that they're not allowed to tell any of their friends what they saw or what they did while they were here. And to just hold on and wait till the game comes out and then they can tell everybody how awesome they were for playing it way before everybody else. We're super excited for you guys to get a hold of it. We're done. We're, we're done. Like three days ago, like... I hope you love the game just as much as I am, you know? <laughs> as such. I can't wait to see what you guys are doing with my post-launch tracking. Being the creative director, I'm obviously the last one to leave the building. Where I can see into your living rooms. <laughs> no, seriously, just look around. With my technologies. Have fun and enjoy Assassin's Creed Revelations. Well, we're back with multiplayer. With Brotherhood, we saw that people really enjoyed the customization, playing around with the characters and giving them different looks and different feels. We built on those features for Revelation. We added a lot of customization visually. We've also allowed you to switch weapons, so you'll be able to choose weapons for your characters, which will actually have impact in game. It'll change the animations that the characters play when they do their kills. When you progress in the game, you'll be able to gain Sturgill credits. With those credits, you'll be able to buy the things that you unlock in the way you want to progress. Oh, such a tragedy. One of the things we introduced is the Friends Hub. That will allow you to see how friends play, what their stats are, what their favorite abilities are, so that you can actually have a strategy before you get into the game. So again, this year we did a, do you want me to say beta, beta? Beta. Beta? Beta? <laughs> beta? Yeah, beta. Because I say beta, so... So just like in Brotherhood, we did a beta this year with Revelations. So yeah, we have a very close relationship with our live dev team. Andrian is always around and, uh, you know, asking for feedback and taking naps on the Animus chair. She snores. <laughs> There's nothing like actually playing a game with a fan of the game. Our involvement in the beta was largely to observe. That's what we do for the most part. The amount of things that we changed and altered, even before we got to the beta stage, were incredibly significant. People are really gonna see when they log on to the first time, we've made several really incredible improvements. We're very close with the community and we feel that they really give back to us, so we wanna make sure that we're listening and that we're available to basically tweak the game and make it the best experience of multiplayer they've had in Assassin's Creed yet.